us about the message. You, you've, you're defeated before you even begin. If, when Jesus was dealing with the devil, when the Lord was dealing with the devil and the devil quoted him scripture, the Lord didn't turn around and say, wait a minute, it's not the scripture. You're quoting the scripture here. The scripture is not the issue. You, you need to get the message. The Lord didn't do that when he was fighting the devil. The Lord said, here, here is what is written. Here is what is written. Here is what is written. He dealt with the, the battle uh, on the word of God. And this is our armour. God has given us the word. His word. And we can defend the faith based on the word of God. Every word of God is pure and holy and bold. And what that means is, God in his providence has provided us with scholars, has provided us with ancient texts where we can put together the word of God. And men are fallible, men's translations are fallible, and men's copying is fallible, but the word of God is not fallible. It is infallible. And we can gather all these ancient texts and get the infallible word of God. Alright? That is the issue. So we have the infallible word of God. We have the original text. We have all the material there. But God in his providence has given us scholars and text to work on. So that we can bring it all together. And in his providence he's preserved the text. All right. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. He didn't say message. He said, my words will not pass away. God's preserved his word. And we must never give that teaching up. We must never, ever give it up. The moment we give that up and we just say message is important, but the text and the words are not, it's game over. You've let the devil in, and once you give that up, the devil will take more and more ground and chip away. The defense against the devil is the word of God. So, you have these two camps in the message and not the fully inspired word uh, view. And these modern views are proliferated, especially now you have uh, Bart Ehrman, you've had Bart Ehrman for a few years now attacking inspiration so uh, his views are, are spreading like wildfire in, in Europe now, they're spread in America and the Muslims are using his views and stuff and he attacks the inspiration of the Bible but on top of that you have more, more writers that are uh, trying to change the view of the Bible you have feminists, you have pro-gay rights activists and they're all putting pressure on trying to change the Bible. And, and part of that pressure is to bring in new views of the Bible. And on top of that, you have a lot of evangelical academics who have imbibed the philosophical culture of the universities today. And they're bringing in uh, clever ways of understanding the Bible, uh, which, which, which are not what the Bible actually teaches. And, and so you have all these various views and it's so important to, to make sure that you have a really clear understanding of the inspiration and authority of the Bible. It's so important. Alright? So I, I know I've laboured it and I've gone on, but I, I hope that I've given you some insight into realising the centrality and importance of this issue and how in the history of theology how Satan has tried to manipulate the church to move it away from scripture. And I hope that historical survey will help you to realize that there's a lot going on in modern times trying to undermine the integrity of this text and not to be taken in by it, but to read your Bible, to have confidence in it and to know that it's fully inspired of God and it is the word of God and that you can trust him, okay? I hope that's been a blessing. Um, so, resources, Let, let's just see what he...
I'll just see what uh, some of the books that he recommends. See if he recommends any books in here. Yeah, I would recommend um, <laughs> I would recommend the Chicago Statement on Biblical Inerrancy. In 1977, the International Council on Biblical Inerrancy was formed in the United States under the chairman of James Boyce with a council of 16 concern on the erosion of a belief in the authority and inspiration of scripture. The ICBI set out to provide conference and publications that would explain the evangelical position on inerrancy. After 10 years of vigorous work, the council considered its work complete and the organization closed down. From the start of the ICBI intended to be international and interdenominational in its representation. Membership of the council and 46 strong advisory board included Edmund Clowney, Jane Packer, Roger Nicoll, Jay Adams, Norman Geisler, John Montgomery, John MacArthur, James Kedeney, etc. The following statement set out the council's commitment in biblical inerrancy. So if you Google the Chicago Statement on Biblical Inerrancy, the Chicago Statement on Biblical Inerrancy. Also, if you, I think, uh, might get some references here. There's not put many references. They're, they're in an index. It's a long index on, on that. But um, I'm going to recommend some books for you. And I think there'll be uh, books recommended here. Yeah, I'm going to recommend some books. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna recommend. I'll just start from the beginning of this book because it's got a brilliant uh, bibliography here. So I'm gonna recommend if you could hear hear the, some of the books that I I recommend. R. K. Harrison. R. K. Harrison. Introduction to the Old Testament. R. K. Harrison, Introduction to the Old Testament, is an excellent book um, on the Old Testament, published by W. B. Erdman's and probably I. V. P. as well. R. K. Harrison, Introduction to the Old Testament. Um, Oswald T. Alice, Oswald T. Alice, The Old Testament, Its Claims and Critics, The Presbyterian and Reformed Publishing Company. Alice, Oswald T. Alice, The Old Testament, Its Claims and Critics, The Presbyterian and Reformed Publishing Company. Superb writer, uh, would include, that's on the Old Testament.
Okay. John W. Montgomery, History and Christianity, Dover's Grove, the Third Interversity Press. J. W. Montgomery, History and Christianity, look at the historical uh, veracity of the Bible. Biblical Theology, Old and New Testament, which will show you how the Bible works together by Gerardus Voss. Gerardus Voss, G E R H A R D U S. Voss, Biblical Theology, Old and New Testament, published by Grand Rapids, also published by the Banner of Truth today, is a helpful book where it shows you how the Bible works together. It's an excellent book. I also cite B.B. Uh, Warfield on Authority and Inspiration of the Bible. B.B. Warfield, Authority and Inspiration of the Bible. Also, if you look at the uh, Bapt 1689 Baptist Confession and the Westminster Confession, if you look at their statements on the Inspiration and Authority of the Bible, so that's the Westminster Confession, and the 1689 Baptist Confession and look at the Heidelberg Confession and they will have statements on scripture. Just, I'm just trying to look. Um, trying to find uh, more references here. Sorry about this. Oh, uh, H. William Green is a is a great book. H. William Green. Uh, H. William Green, The Higher Criticism of the Pentateuch. It's an old book. William H. Green, The Higher Criticism of the Pentateuch is an excellent book uh, defending the inspiration of the Bible. Uh, the Higher Criticism of the Pentateuch, William H. Green. Uh, I'm sure you can get that free PDF on the internet. And uh, E. W. Hengstenberg, E. W. Hengstenberg, Berg, H. E. N. G. S. T. E. N. B. E. R. G. E. W. Hengensberg is a German bishop. Uh, an old book in the the second of the eighteenth, sorry, nineteenth century. It's uh, E. W. Hengsberg, Dissertations on the genuineness of, genuineness of the Pentateuch. So I'm just seeing uh, R. A. Torrey, R. A. Torrey, The Higher Criticism of the New Theology. It's an old book. Unger Merrill F. Merrill F. Unger, Merrill F. Unger, Introductory Guide to the Old Testament. Um, Strong's exhaustive, Strong's exhaustive concordance to the Bible. Also, E. Young, Thy Word is Truth. You can also listen to some of his lectures on a uh, sermon audio. Sermon audio, E. J. Young, Thy Word is Truth, and he's given some lectures on Isaiah and the inspiration of the Bible. 
E.J. Young, Thy Word is Truth, published by Banner of Truth, and also you can listen to his lectures on uh, Sermon Audio. Um, I'm just looking for some of the uh, some other books for you in this bibliography. I only want to recommend that what's very helpful. If you look at the Princeton theologians like V.B. Warfield, uh, Charles Hodge, A. A. Hodge, um, and also some of the Westminster, Westminster Theological Seminary early theologians like Cornelius Van Til, uh, John Murray. Um, if you Google these names, John Murray of Westminster Theological Seminary, um, Cornelius Van Til they will give you statements about the inspiration of the Bible also if you check out uh, Herman Bavink's Reform Dogmatics Herman Bavink, Reform Dogmatics check out what he says about the Bible um, in his Reform Dogmatics and the inspiration and authority of the Bible that's Herman Bavink and uh, also L. Raymond, L. Raymond is a Presbyterian theologian. He's written a book, A New Systematic Theology. L. Raymond is Presbyterian Reformed. And he has an excellent uh, biblical teaching about the Bible, what the Bible says about itself in his Systematic Theology, pu published by Nelson. Uh, I think it's R. L. Raymond. And uh, he has written a book, new new systematic new systematic new book on systematic theology, uh, or a new systematic theology published by Nelson, and he has a couple of chapters on the inspiration and authority of the Bible, and they are excellent. Also, Herman Bavink, uh, Reform Dogmatics, he has an excellent chapter on the inspiration of the Bible. Um, the Princeton theologians, Charles Hodge, A. A. Hodge. B.B. Warfield, also the early Westminster Theological Seminary theologians, Cornelius Van Til, John Murray, um, E.J. Young, Lectures, Thy Word of Truth, a book by Banner Truth and Lectures on Sermon Audio. Um, See if I can find some more books for you. F.F. Um, Bruce, the New Testament documents are they reliable? F.F. Bruce, the New Testament documents are they reliable? You can get that by IVP. It is a very helpful book. He he was influenced a little bit by modern ideas of scripture but that book is particularly helpful in defending the canon of scripture um, get there so Uh, there is a book by, I'll get some more uh, books for you. Forgive me for going on. I'm going to get you some books. I'm going to recommend more and more books for you because I think it's important.
I'm going to go on my iPhone, I'm going to get some books. I've recommended other books, but I'm going to... We get that. Forgive me, it'll be worth it. The classic book, which I've already mentioned, is by B.B. Warfield, Inspiration and Authority of the Bible. That will give you, uh, you can get it on Amazon. Another book that you can get is Scripture Alone, exploring the Bible's accuracy and authority and authenticity by James White. James White, Scripture Alone, exploring the Bible's accuracy, authority and authenticity. Another book that you could get is The Doctrine of the Word of God, Theology of Lordship by John Frame. The Doctrine of the Word of God, Theology of Lordship by John Frame. And Taking God at His Word by uh, Kevin DeYoung. Taking God at His Word by Kevin D. Young is a superb book that will be a blessing to you. Uh, Knowing Scripture by R.C. Sproul is a very good book. Knowing Scripture by R.C. Sproul. The John MacArthur Bible Commentary is a very helpful book. John MacArthur Bible Commentary. Um, is helpful. Looking at the canon of Scripture, uh, The Heresy of Orthodoxy by J. Kruger. The Heresy of Orthodoxy by J. Kruger looks at how the, how the uh, canon of scripture was formed. Again, Reformed Dogmatics, uh, if you read 
the chapter on scripture in Reformed Dogmatics by Herman Bavink. Also, uh, James Boyce, The Foundations of Christian Faith is a theology book that you'll find uh, talking about the inspiration of the Bible. And a lot of what I've been saying about modern Christianity and false Christianity and, and the inspiration of the Bible is uh, by read a, a classic work by uh, Gresham Machen called Christianity and Liberalism. And uh, Christianity and Liberalism by Gresham Machen is, is a very good, a very good book. So... So we'll, we'll, we'll recommend a few more works. A book by D.A. Carson, D.A. Carson, The Enduring Authority, The Enduring Authority of the Christian Scriptures. Now he was a a brilliant, he's a brilliant evangelical scholar. The Enduring Authority of the Christian Scriptures by D.A. Carson. Sinclair Ferguson. I think, uh, just check that. I would recommend From the Mouth of God, Trusting and Reading and Applying the Bible by Sinclair Ferguson. From the Mouth of God, Trusting, Reading and Applying the Bible by Sinclair Ferguson. You can get that on uh, Amazon. So... Um, Um, I'm just looking for one more. So I think I think I've given you quite a few books there. If you go on Sermon Audio and type in Inspiration of the Bible, you'll find loads of lectures and talks by various pastors. They'll be all sound. On sermon audio and if you go to monogism uh, if you go on monogism and type in inspiration of the Bible on monogism it's a big reformed website you'll find loads of people theologians and scholars and teachers that will you can download lectures uh, listen to audio lectures you can also um, download PDFs download books all on the inspiration of the Bible so I'm sorry to have taken so long on that, but at least I've given you a whole breadth of stuff on the Old Testament and some modern writers as well and theology books that will be a blessing to you and a help. Particularly, Kevin de Young's book is a very short book on the inspiration of the Bible. Very, very helpful. And Sinclair Ferguson's book on, on what I quoted before, very, very helpful. I would start with them. And uh, the R.C. Sproul book, I would start with those three. And um, for preachers, I would recommend to go to Herman Bavink's Reform Dogmatics. And then if you want to research it more, I would go to the Princeton theologians, A.A. Hodge and B.B. Warfield, 
and the Westminster theologians such as uh, E.J. Young, John Murray, uh, etc. And uh, if you want to develop more scholarly acumen, then you can go to Harrison on the Old Testament, Alice, Alice on the Old Testament, and um, uh, Gerardos Voss on the Old Testament, and Robert Dick Wilson on the Old Testament uh, concerning the inspiration. If you really want to go into the scholarship from a classical evangelical point of view, those are scholars that you can go to on the Old Testament. Um, another book that you could read <coughs> is Francis Schaeffer's Evangelical Disaster. <coughs> Evangelical Disaster. And that shows you, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> it gives you the gives you a path of what's happening in modern evangelicalism concerning the inspiration of the Bible. <coughs> and also, read Ian Murray's The Life of Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones, The Life of Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones, and his two volume is made into one volume now. And if you read that volume, it'll, it'll show you how modern evangelicalism has changed from <coughs> excuse me, classical evangelicalism. Okay, hope that's been a help to you. It's a lot of information there, and uh, yeah, so be strong on the inspiration and authority of the Bible. Be clear about it and be strong about it. It's very, very important. God bless you, and thank you for listening, and uh, take care.